Okay, good morning. Bonjour. Uh, hello. Good morning. Uh, I am David. I, I will introduce shortly. Sorry. Uh, I will introduce shortly about IDEN3 project before Jordi comes into detail techni technical details. For us, um, IDEN3 is still a very young project. And we have been very quiet in terms of communication. But uh, in, we have communicated about the libraries that Jordi developed about uh, Sidqui compiler of Sidqui SNARKs and also SNARKGS, um, which in part, in fact, is core for our technology. But the project is much more than that. Uh, I want to position and to explain to you what, what we are and what we are not. Okay? So what we are is uh, developing protocols, data structures, and, and models uh, for this, for a complete identity management system, okay? And uh, what we do is open source code, and we develop reference implementations for uh, these protocols that we design. In fact, we are not forcing anyone to use our technology in the, in the full stack or, um, or anything, any, any specific model, but we are encouraging to use our models as a reference, to use our APIs, even contribute or provide feedback to the project, okay? What the, the objectives of the project uh, are very specific. We are, we are developing a self-sovereign Ethereum-based identity. But we, we want, this is free for the users, for the users, users. We will see how it's uh, performed. We also develop scalability being off-chain and not transacting on-chain, minimizing and structuring all, all in Merkle trees, okay? Uh, we also, uh, for us, it's core uh, to provide privacy by design with this uh, underlying zero knowledge technology that I mentioned before, and the concept of the non-reusable proofs. And we also deliver a reference implementation for the user wallet and this key management solution for, to, to take care of the user keys. And also, we um, are involved in the community standardization in terms of providing new standards and even adapting to the existing uh, for, the, for the community. So we are in the UX track. And we wanted to show a bit uh, on reinforce of the usability, what we are doing in terms of the wallet. Okay? So we are developing, we, we are delivered our new version of a web-based wallet. Uh, and this wallet, we present some of the functionalities that we are developing to the user. So for us, it's, it's very important to, to be a reference implementation which shows what we are doing. But in fact, it's our implementation. Okay? We are working hard to improve that because for us, and we understand, like other projects mentioned before, that adoption is key. Okay? We also included this functionality of export-import, but we are working on these improvements with some methodologies in terms of designing for trust for the user. These are very new concepts. The user have to understand what they are doing with entities, with claims, uh, also with which, where the data is placed, who has in control of these accesses, where the data is shared. Okay? And also, that makes sense for transactions and access to applications so that users have to feel comfortable with what we are doing and make, makes some usability for them. So we have this process, which is also um, you know, something about methodology. But we are researching on what, what's the state of the technology, what can be performed. Our current roadmap even it provides new functionalities. We are trying to include that. And we map the user flow in some screens and uh, you know, navigation for the user, which is understandable. We do, do some testing and iterations on the delivery of that. And also, we try to provide and receive feedback for the users. So this is a, a process which uh, we are working on. And what we imagine in the future is not a wallet, which uh, presents to the user this complexity of decentralization, but something which is more easy for, for them, like this concept of you know, identities which are structured into roles, and these roles has these claims or information attributes, and also per, they have access to applications in a different way. So this is more structured like current applications and not so, so complex for the users, even though we are including something like zero knowledge proof access or private access. We try to, to show what the user is doing and him to understand which the technology underlying, but being easy for him to use that. Okay? So this is why what we imagine in terms of our wallet, 
that for sure when it's finished it's also reference implementation and you can you can reuse because it's open source okay so we are announcing the, the first delivery which is an alpha version for our, our technology in terms of modules with combining uh, a new creation and use for the entity on single single login on centralized apps okay so we have this document which explains how to use that in terms of integration in terms of examples, and so you were able to have a look at that. Uh, the next thing we are doing is the, the for the decentralized applications, but uh, is the next step, okay? So uh, Jordi will explain more details about uh, our technology. Okay. Well, uh, this is a starting point. I think that uh, you all know about uh, identity. This is the basic, the basic game that we are playing here. Somebody is to, uh, we have identities, we have claimers, somebody is, uh, a claimer is an identity that is doing a claim on another identity, and then we prove that claim to a third party. Uh, we can do this proof in a normal proof, or we can generate also zero knowledge proof, non reusable knowledge proof, uh, zero knowledge proof, and other, other kind of proof. But we always have this three party game, you know, claimer, recipient of the claim, and uh, a verifier in the, in the, in the system. But I want to um, explain some of the different concepts that we are working in item three, more technical part. The first is um, defining an identity. We call it uh, uh, identity genesis. Um, when you want to create an identity, a digital identity, what do you need? What's the first thing that you need? I think probably you will need a private key if it's a self sovereign identity. At least you will need a private key for sure. But you, you will probably need other things for example you can you may need a recovery a recovery procedure for this private key probably you are, you want to you will want to make claims so you will have to say where all those claims are going to be anchored okay so maybe what blockchain or what contract of what blockchain you want to specify and maybe you can have any other data that you need before you define an identity uh, you need this this place so what we are doing and i think this is um, something that we are improving and we are uh, discovering that this is probably the best way to do it, is we are putting all these, all these uh, you know, parameters. We can take these parameters as a self-claims. So you are creating an identity, so these are self-claims. We Merkleize all these claims, and the Merkle root of all this initial data that defines the identity, this can be the identity ID. And this is very, very useful when you work to work later on with these identities. It's like the first Merkle root of the initial claims that an identity have. And from there, you can create more claims. How we are creating claims? Well, mainly we are, every time that we are putting a claim, this is the problem, maybe there is the, 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 the genesis at the beginning, but every time that an identity is creating more claims, is generating a new, a new, a new Merkle, a new database which has a new Merkle tree and half a, a different a new Merkle Merkle root, okay. And in a normal system, you know, in a what we call it in a direct claim, uh, we will put this root in a in a in a in a blockchain. This works. This model works quite well for you know for for uh, for example for governments or for um, authorities that uh, generates many claims uh, per day. Now a government that's generating I don't know thousands of claims. Mm, uh, per minute, it's okay that they do a uh, transaction every 10 minutes to the blockchain, okay? But for normal users, if you want to democratize, uh, if you want to, everybody be able, should be able to be a, 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 an, an, a certification authority and have their own certification authority and meet claims, this is a, a model that does not work quite well and does not scale at, as much, that much. So what we are doing is, we're working, we're doing a thing that's quite similar, for example, what uh, Plasma, Plasma Zcash is doing. That mainly is there is a relayer, could be a centralized relayer or decentralized relayer, that mainly is making a claim that says that uh, the root of the claims of uh, an identity is this one. So this uh, relayer can aggregate many, many uh, users, many claims uh, of many users. And with a single transaction, we can anchor all of those claims. And the nice thing of this is that this can be done in a trustless manner. So the idea is that the relayer can be a trustless relayer, so that 
not so the relayer cannot put uh, everybody's uh, a, a random route for each user the route needs to be signed and needs to follow some of some of the rules so we are sure that nobody neither the relayer is going to be able to make any claim in our behalf of course this half the problem that the that the, uh, the relayer stops working maybe it's, and in this case maybe you will not be able to prove anything but if you are able to prove we have the warranty that this proof is valid and this is the concept of relayer so this is the, the concept of uh, scaling the, the the claiming system for each for each uh, for each person another thing that we have this that we need to consider when we're working in identities identities when they are alone and they are okay but a lot of the identities needs to talk one each other and needs to discover one each other and here is where we just designed it uh, say as a very simple uh, decentralized system for discovering identities for example if I want I have for example a proof but I want to see for example that this proof is not re revoked from the original identity I need to connect to this digital identity and see if there is no revocation that happens in the last moment so where how can I find this identity so here is just a very simple pragmatic uh, protocol uh, that just uh, when you want to find an identity you just use the peer-to-peer -peer network whisper or uh, leave p2p -P -P whatever you send the transaction say I'm looking for this identity and the identity or an agent that uh, authorized for that identity just solve and says hey here if you want to connect me you can talk to me here and this here can be any protocol can be maybe a centralized protocol a web service in some server or can be a decentralized protocol or a Tor, uh, you know, a Tor uh, service, whatever you want to put in there. Okay, but this is a way for discovering uh, identities and and what can you discover? And here is the interesting things: is when you want to communicate with an identity, we define these uh, identity-based services. So maybe you want to send him an email, a message. Maybe you can, you want to get, I don't know, their LinkedIn or their. Uh, no, they're, 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 or their public claims, or you can have, you can have even access to their public part of their social, social networks, or many other uh, applications that are identity, identity centric that represents yourself. So this is a point for discovering these kinds of services that you can add on top of that. Going a little low, low level what can you do what are the basic what are the basic uh, actions that you can do that an identity can do mainly are two things and that's it it's uh, creating a claim so signing things or you can get a message and you as an identity you sign the message or if you want you make a claim that at the end is signing a message with a timestamp with the time related things of course, then you can create proofs, but proofs are not uh, implicit to the identities. They are, they, anybody can have, can create a proof on any other thing. But for my identity, these are the two basic, the two basic uh, actions that an identity can do. But to work from the user perspective, uh, what we see is that most of the times, what we are, when we are working with an identity, is mainly what we are doing is just filling forms. An identity mainly means just uh, so an identity maybe is uh, sending a form, uh, requesting somebody to fill a form, the person just fill the form and send it back. The difference here is that a form not only can have uh, normal data fields, when I'm saying data fields can be text fields, uh, multiple choice or uh, pictures or whatever, they, there are, I would say, at least two new kind of fields that we, can, we, we introduce in these forms. The first one is a signature. It's quite easy. Uh, most of the forms, paper forms, they have a place also to sign. So in some way, an identity should be able to sign forms and should be a field for signing things. And the other thing is uh, proving things. So it could be a, a field that's requ requesting some sort of proof. So you should be able to prove a form. As an example, imagine that uh, uh, an employment an employment application form 
probably will have the, some information about things, but in some point, maybe there is the, the degrees that you have. So here in the degrees, you will not, will not only put which degree you have, you put, probably will put the proof that the, uni the given university just made that degree, and you're just filling a normal form of this kind. So this uh, sort of, uh, this, we are defining this protocol for requesting forms to identities and fulfilling forms of identities. I think, and I think this is a good way to, to, to explain the, the users because they already are used to work with uh, paper forms, most of the people. So that's what we are translating, adding these, these fields. What else? Another thing on an identity is naming identities. Uh, you know, if we have to refer to identities with a hashed number, this is not usable for most of the users. So what we are doing here is uh, we are using this claim system um, connected, if you want, to the, to the ENS system. At the end, is the owner of the name. The owner of a name is just doing a claim that a given name, a, a given subname of that domain belongs to a given identity. This is nothing very different. This is actually, for example, what the normal email system is doing. Now, the owner of a given domain is adding accounts to that for that domain. So we are doing more or less the same. So the, the idea is that the owner of a given name is just assigning with a specific kind of claim, it's claiming that this name belongs to that identity. So the identity can prove that they hold, that there is this claim, that they, they hold this, 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 this name. Okay? So these are some of the pieces that we are working on this identity system. There is one part, you know, in, in, in item three, we, we, we we are very concerned about privacy, and uh, we are working very hard in all the zero knowledge proof. And we take this technology from, from the top, starting that technology and, and, and working that technology, because the technology that's quite new and still needs to be developed. So we have this more infrastructure pieces that we have been working on. I just want to present it here very quick, but the first is CIRCOM. CIRCOM is a DSL uh, language in order to write zero knowledge uh, uh, proofs. Then we have uh, CircumLib, which is a library of some basic and not so basic uh, circuits that can be used, of course we use it very much in ID3, but can be used for many other uh, projects. I don't know, Rollup is using, another, uh, another projects can use. These libraries include things like uh, EDDSA, EDDSA, signature schemes, um, specific uh, hash functions, uh, for uh, 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 for snarks like Pedersen hashes or MIMC, uh, and we also have and we also have all these um, uh, sparse Merkle tree that uh, functions that allows to prove that inclusion exclusion or allows to prove an insertion or relation or update in a key value sparse Merkle tree that are mainly the trees that we are working on the identity system, and all this zero knowledge. I just want to just point some usages. Because zero knowledge is not only about for scaling that we have seen before, for privacy that you, can that you can also imagine. Here I will present some other use cases that where zero knowledge are very, very applicable in identity systems. The first one is anonymous login. Imagine that uh, everybody in, in, that, uh, in this Congress uh, wants to, uh, can access to a given page. Okay, and only those people that buy the ticket can access to this given page. But you want to log in in an anonymous way. Well, you can do that with zero knowledge. You can prove that you buy a ticket, but without revealing who you are. Okay, this is the kind of things that you can do. What else? Re reputation proofs. Uh, reputation at the end is an algorithm that takes, for example, many claims you know, degrees, uh, endorsements, uh, likes of other people, many claims that are made for me, they compute with some sort of algorithm and they compute some number. With a reputation, I can, and then what I can do is I can prove uh, that I hold a given score of a given reputation, but without revealing all the source that it comes from. So this is another usage of, for zero knowledge. What else? Cross identity proof. I, I like a lot this one because, for example, this allows for me to create different identities. Can create have my real identity, 
maybe validated with some claims uh, from the university and from the government and my real identity. But I can create another identity, different one, that even nobody knows about it, but I can link it anonymously one to another. So in some ways, if you have a real identity, you can create a new identity, which is not related, because you are just proving that you are holding a new identity. You have what we call it a nullifier, so that's, that's unique. And you can only create one of those accounts with, for each uh, identity, for each real identity. But this one is not related to the other. This allows to create anonymous systems, but solving so, but systems that are not uh, um, civil attack, so that are civil attack resistance, because you, they are, because you people will not be able to create another identity if it's not related to that. And this is opens like another, another thing on that. And the other that are, we already presented here, but that's the, the non-reusable proofs. It's possible to create proofs with zero knowledge that prove any, so any kind of proof, but that the recipient of the prover can not reuse it. If, they, if I'm sending, so if I want to prove David something, I can send a proof to David, but if David takes a proof and publishes that, this proof is not valid. Nobody will believe that. Mainly what we, are, what we are doing is we are not just proving something. We are proving something or as I'm proving something or that David have his private key or that, sorry, or that I have his private key. So because it's obvious that I don't have the, his, the David's private key, that means that David believes me is not for sure that this proof is, this other proof that I want to, that, that I'm proving is valid. But on the other side, if David just take this proof, is proving everybody that whatever proof I made or that he holds his private key, which is obvious he has his private key. So if even if I take that proof and I uh, encrypt it with David's private key, I know if that if at the moment that this proof is open, it, because you need that private key, this proof is not usable anymore. Okay? So that's mainly different things. I know that's like a, a lot of things put it together, but are some of the things that we are developing. I think it give, gives a you know, a big picture of the different uh, fronts that we are working on. If you have any question. If you, sorry for that. Uh, how uh, how this use case can work if I pay someone to give me a good support mm -hmm. and he is able to do that because support is not revealed and I don't have a good uh, reputation support and he, he will be okay with that because the source is not revealed. Mm. Yeah, it's this, I'm not, I'm here, I'm not talking about the goodness or the badness of the reputation systems. Here, I ju I'm just uh, showing a use case where you can prove that you have a given score, given an, uh, a specific algorithm, a, a, a known algorithm. The algorithm can be good or bad and can be gameable or not. But if you, if you know this, uh, this, 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 uh, this way to compute a score that's based on claims, and then you can prove that the result of this score algorithm is this one without revealing the, uh, the inputs, the, the inputs of the claims. Of course, designing a reputation algorithms is something that's complex and of course is out of the scope of this, of, this, of this project. It's just an example of how can you use a, a claim system with a zero knowledge proof to prove something without revealing Revealing, some, revealing uh, uh, where where the source came from.
The other question, yeah. So you mentioned the voting as one of your use cases. I'm thrilled to hear that. But my question is, in a decentralized settings, how can you prevent uh, people from creating many identities and voting many times? And voting? Voting. Uh, yeah. You mentioned anonymous voting. Well, I'm, I... How can you ensure everyone who gets one vote cannot create many identities? Well, there are, there are many schemas, but in general, uh, any voting system, the initial, you need to start from a, from a, a, a census, you know, from a list of voters that can vote in a system. And this is a list of identities. I mean, uh, you need, a central you, need uh, you need, before voting, you need, uh, well, you need, a, it can be a DAO. You know, a DAO, it's a, a, and, the vote, and the voters maybe are the, the stakeholders. But you need, it can be, so, but you need, if you are, to, if we're talking about voting, you need to uh, some sort, some way to construct uh, uh, initial, initial census, who can vote? How do you construct that? It can be centralized, of course, but can also be decentralized. It depends on the, on the application. Yeah, uh, right now, uh, we are mainly we are working very hard in optimizations. Uh, optimization, we have like two fronts open. Well, if you want three fronts open. Uh, uh, one of those is trying to, uh, for generating these big proofs, uh, trying to clust cluster, cl using you know, clusters and uh, huge computers in order to compute this big proof as fast as, as possible for these kind of single operator systems like that. That's one thing that we are working hard on that part. The other is uh, trying to compute uh, zero, uh, zero knowledge proofs in the, in the browser. We are working very hard. We are writing a very low level uh, web assembly uh, primitives to run fast in the browsers. This is the other. And the other is more technical, but it's about the compilers. You know, this compiler is like a first version, and we need to improve also what we call the witness generation uh, way that we are improving that part. And it's more about the compiling. But that's, that are the three points that we are working hard on that. There are other, you know, there are other specific usage, uh, zero knowledge that works well for a specific use case. Nice thing of uh, Zika Snarks or Zika Starks or this sort of protocols that start being available is that are generic. So you can do whatever you want with this. And this is our, this, of course, it's like, you know, it, it, they are generic. That means that you have, they are a little bit more expensive in terms of uh, other stuff. But this opens a lot of new, Possibilities in this in this new world. Uh, it's a technology. You know, I, I want to put. Well, this is a list. You can you can put it. This is from this comes from the last paper that in this page. One of the last papers is called Sonic. You know, it's like uh, it's one of those. But it's a technology that right now is running very 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 hard and uh, very very fast. And there are many papers that every month are coming into the space. And this is a technology that's improving day by day. And uh, yeah, we are working with uh, Zika Snarks. I think they are great. Of course, they have a they have a big problem. Is like they need the trusted setup. But if you just forget about the trusted setup, they are very, very, very good uh, technology. Besides that, of course, there is a Starks that are there. We need to analyze on that, and you know, and many other and many other options out of out, out of there. This is a full world. You know, there is a even standardization on that, and it's a, it's a world that's moving very fast at this, at, at, at this stage in the research field. Any other question? Yeah, just, uh, no. Maybe. Ah, what? Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. sorry. Mm. Apart, uh, apart yeah. from, from the definition of perspective, you mentioned cases, use cases by invoking uh, and bank, you the of KYC in banking. But have you explored the business opportunity there? Like, have you talked to banks or, or government authorities if they will be able to use this technology in order to, to do those KYCs and, uh, and things like that? 
absolutely. That's so, that's a great application for that. So. We we are you know from the open source uh, perspective we are developing the main the main uh, you know the, the core pro pro protocols they are quite low level protocols but of course on top of that there are companies that are working on that uh, on that scenarios and many others but that's clearly one of the important uh, use cases that we are working and of course we as an open source we are listening and hearing different applications and that's of course that's one of the one of the important ones Yeah, there is a couple more questions, maybe there, and then you. Yeah, we are working together. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, that, that's it. That's it. Well, we, we can. Thank you very much.